The White House is considering restricting U.S. investment in Chinese companies and even delisting Chinese companies from U.S. exchanges, as well as preventing U.S. government pension funds from investing in Chinese companies. But they're considering it. They haven't actually passed any legislation yet. The Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board, which manages thrift saving plans, uh, the 401k for the federal employees, wanted to invest in the Morgan Stanley Capital International Emerging Markets Index, the MSCI. Although many of the Chinese firms in the index are state owned or state directed. So what this means is Morgan Stanley had an emerging markets index fund, which invested in a variety of international companies, but included in that mix of companies were state owned Chinese companies. And it is very common that retirement plans and public retirement plans invest in index funds. Uh, so by investing in an index fund, they're indirectly investing in these Chinese state-owned companies. A company named Hick Vision uh, was featured in many of these index funds. And this company makes surveillance equipment, which is currently used as a tool of repression against China's Uyghur Muslim minority in Xinjiang, Uyghur Autonomous Region. Both New York State Teachers Retirement System and the California State Teachers Retirement System had invested in the company. Hikvision's controlling shareholder, the China Electronic Technology Group Corporation, was added to the U.S. Commerce Department's entity list last year for acting contrary to the national security or foreign policy interests of the United States. So this again shows how opaque the ownership of these companies is. So we have this company called Hikvision, but now there's another company that owns controlling interest in Hikvision, and that company is China Electronics Technology Group which of course was blacklisted by the United States. A federal ban has since been instituted preventing US federal contractors from doing business with this company, but that doesn't prevent American retirement funds from investing in these companies. And major US investment companies like Fidelity and Goldman Sachs, they've sold off a lot of their ownership in these companies, a lot of the, the shares they're holding. But again, I, I think that these are, I, I don't want to criticize these companies without talking to them. What I have to believe happens is when something like this comes in the news and it becomes a hot topic for a week, the investors call up and complain. Different groups, activists and whatever, call and complain. So they sell off uh, their ownership in these companies as a show. But I, but I would imagine that there are they own an equal number of these blacklisted companies or that they will later buy additional shares of blacklisted companies. Or if, if we did an audit right now, we would find shares of other companies that are either state owned or, as I said, that have been blacklisted or banned. Another uh, company that they owned shares of was called Dahua, and it was a subsidiary owned by China Investment Company. And China Investment Company is the sovereign wealth fund of the Communist Party of China. The Communist Party of China, the government of China, they have a sovereign wealth fund that invests their cash reserves. The company is called the Chinese Investment Company. And that company then is the majority shareholder or is a shareholder in many of these companies. So other Chinese companies which manufacture Chinese weapons are still open to US investment. One such company is Aviation Industry Corporation of China, AVIC, which US Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer has described as the sole domestic supplier of bombers, fighter jets, and other aircraft to the People's Liberation Army. And yet, American companies and American funds are investing in this company. So then we ask, who should be policing the investments? Who should be checking to approve the investments? And who should, be, who should have the authority to block them? Now, we have this CFIS, this Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. Okay, this is an umbrella agency composed of 32 different federal agencies which review foreign investment, which could threaten national security. And they are, um, they do have the authority to block these investments or at least to make strong recommendations to the government to block these investments. However, CFIS usually investigates investments in technology or military contracts military installations, or other sensitive information, but has no responsibility for food or drugs or USDA or US uh, FDA investments. In the previous administration, President Obama, acting on national security concerns, blocked a Chinese takeover 
of a semiconductor manufacturer. In September 2017, President Trump also halted the Chinese acquisition of Lattice, an American semiconductor manufacturer. Uh, Cephas prevented Chinese from purchasing the money transfer company MoneyGram on concerns that data on millions of Americans could be compromised. So, I mean, so, so first of all, the financial sector is already a protected sector in China, and the U.S. has very limited uh, market access to invest in that sector in China. Our uh, financial sector is pretty much wide open. Chinese companies, even government companies, can buy our financial companies. Now, a Chinese company was trying to buy MoneyGram, which you think, okay, they're going to buy uh, this company that does money transfer. Yes, but when they buy MoneyGram, they're going to have the data on all the customers of MoneyGram. And this would be the financial data on every American who uses MoneyGram services. And thank God. Uh, President Trump halted that acquisition or Cephas under President Trump halted that acquisition. But these are the kind of acquisitions that are happening that are terrifying. When you hear about China maintaining clouds for American companies and then having access to all of our data, it's very scary. Uh, had they bought MoneyGram, they would have had data on probably millions of Americans. Yeah. Thank you for listening and tune in next time. Oh, and by the way, you can buy my books on Amazon.com. I've got three books on the Chinese economy. I have several books on martial arts if you're into that sort of thing. And I even wrote a comic book if you want to check that out. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I tweet about Chinese economy, tweet about the Mongolian economy. But I got to tell you, I do so much economic research, so much tweeting about economics. I teach economics at the university, so I blow off steam by uh, tweeting about uh, comic books, wrestling, martial arts, uh, collector's toys, and Marvel, especially Captain America. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, you can tune in on Twitter. If you don't like that stuff, you can tune in and just read the economic stuff. Uh, please, if you like this video, please click like, please subscribe to the channel. All right, I'm Dr. Antonio Persefo from Ulan Betar. Stay well.